Yeah. Just give you usually. And they were, if you did that to them, they'd think it's below them, hopefully. You know, they wouldn't have to be told you didn't interrupt, would you? Well, no, well I say that to the, the, the child who's... The child you kids. Child yeah, exactly, exactly. And they would understand that. You know, if you said to them, would you like me to say to you, look, I'm really pleased that you made the effort not to interrupt anyone today. I mean, Doesn't make sense. No. And they, I think they can understand it. Anyone else been through that kind of dialogue successfully? Um, what I did was I just broke down and took them aside and said, well, you know this person, you know their normal behaviours. Think about how hard it was for that boy to turn around and do something positive. And they go over there, yeah, you're right. What year level? Five, six. Yeah, okay, that's pretty good. Secondary. Secondary is even better, because they don't want to know. <laughs> you know it's, it's, okay, and you two? Yeah, um, year seven, the oppositional defiance boy. Um, he wasn't present at our classroom meeting. He was absent. Well, he was suspended that day. And um, <coughs> and we were talking about praise and rewards and stuff. And um, and the the issue of, of the boy came up. And I said I, I have to treat Josh a little bit differently. And um, that's because you all know what he'd do if I said sit down, Josh, and do your work. And they all look. I said, what do you think he'd do? And they they, they offered up their answers, and they all understood that. The same the that he needed that, it, that, that he needs a different treatment. I usually take him outside and speak to him outside. Okay, so what you technically have to do, according to this logic, is write down now what now if you had a school wide system even, or class your own classroom, what rewards work in your <coughs> setting? That's the question I'm asking you. What rewards work? What would you be comfortable using? Some of you have said you would not be comfortable using money. I want to a full list of things that you'd be prepared to do, or have done, or know others are doing, because you're going to have to rank them in a minute, and, and try to think about how you're going to get, sort of structure this for somebody. So it's just share on your table a list of rewards. Now remember what you're offering them for, not for good work. This has got nothing to do with work. This has to do with just being respectful of other people's rights to learn, and to be safe. So give it your best shot. Write down the things you'd be prepared to use. Let's start with nonverbal. Did anyone come up with some nonverbal recognitions for social behaviour? Anyone write down any? Non yep. Raffle ticket would be eventually a tangible. You're going to win something in the raffle, so that's beyond nonverbal. I'm thinking of something that doesn't have a verbal component and it just is a sign or a signal, a high five, someone said. That would be a thumbs up. That would be, a, and then again, visual, a visual sign. What else? I've got a lanyard that have a lakes legend because we're from the lakes and it's just a recognition you've done a great job or um, you know, we could just get rewarded for, for either good effort or good behaviour and it's just a quick flash of the card uh, and then at the end of the class I get a little stamp so it's like a sticker. Okay. So and that will be communication to somebody else. Anything that they can carry away with them is what you call communication to others. So all your stickers and your, it's no different to a phone call home. It gives them the option of sharing their competence and mm -hmm. responsibility with somebody important usually. I'm thinking like a thumbs up, um, <coughs> high five, anyone touch kids on the shoulder or any of that stuff? Yeah. That's the calculated risk you run, isn't it? <laughs> I must tell you I had an amazing experience once with this. I had a, um, a very good teacher in training who had been working with street kids in, in Chile, I think. And he came and did primary at La Trobe, and he was exceptional. And he went into a primary school for a round, I think this is his last round, and I was rung because he was on due process. I said, what's happened? You know, I couldn't believe this. Apparently he'd grabbed some kid like this and bruised his shoulder as he ushered him out of a room. Sort of grabbed too hard, it seems. <coughs> and um, so the kid's story was that he'd come in lunchtime with a friend of his, because this teacher has, a, as I would have predicted actually, connected to the kid. He had a lot of reference power. He connected this very challenging kid. And um, it was lunchtime, and the kid had come to be with the teacher, with this friend of his, and he had a football and he was kicking it around the, in the school, in the, in, the, in the classroom. So the teacher said, give me the ball. And he said, no. He 
said, give me the ball. Because he was doing what we'd trained him to do, which is just reassert and see what happens. And he said, no. He said, give me the ball. And I think on the fourth time, the kid gave him the ball. And then he ushered him out. And he, to reconnect, he touched him on the shoulder as he ushered him out, thinking that would be sort of like a connection again. And the kid, that's what the teacher said. The kid said, he didn't usher him out, he grabbed him and he had a bruise. So he'd gone through this um, in this first telling of the story. And so when I was invited in, he was telling the story again. So he was going through his story and the kid got to the part about the grabbing and he said, no, no, it was granddad. Just like that. He would have gone through a lie detector up until then. He was convinced his teacher had done it to him. And, and, and so he'd mixed up the rejection associated with bringing this other kid in to see his relationship with his teacher, but then the teacher taking away all that by taking the ball off him and being nasty and, you know, all his vision. So he, he blamed the teacher with this bruise on his shoulder. And it was just remarkable. And I thought, gee, you, you know, you, you touch people and you think, OK, it's pretty obvious, you know. But in this case, the poor guy, it was about to pay a huge price for, for actually using touch and yet touch is so critical for these kids. So it's an interesting, it, just, it was an eye opener for me to see this kid plausibly go through the story and then just suddenly stop as if he'd just discovered, and he had, that it wasn't the teacher at all. And up until then he was convinced it was a teacher and he would have convinced anybody else, I guess. I, I assume he would have passed any lie detector test. So physical touch, high five safe. I saw another thing which was interesting. I, I had, had to review an article. It was on um, college students in America and the stats teacher, they took a stats class. Let's, I could do it in this class. And they randomised groups. So I could set, say I had different tables. One was control and one was treatment. And what treatment was that when I come to your table, I was to touch you between the wrist and the elbow as I looked at whatever it was you're working on. And that's it. So it was sort of safe touch. <clears throat> and, and they watched to see what would happen. And it was predictable. The ones who were touched started to ask more <coughs> questions in class. Um, by the end of the semester, they outperformed the others significantly. Just remarkable. So this sort of concept of professional touch, if you can find a way of doing it so you don't get put in jail, <laughs> um, it's, it's a really interesting, it's a real dilemma because you can't, you, I mean, you're not entitled, it's risky business. So i am sort of got these both in my head, you know, as a, and I'm thinking this through. But if there's any safe non-verbal non physical sort of touchy, yeah? Well, touch someone's work would be really similar to touching... OK, so there, I've got a suggestion for you. We can, we can, anyone wants an experiment? Touching someone's work may be as personal or personal enough as touching them on the arm as a suggestion. And that, that's an interesting concept. There's another piece of research to be done, obviously, because that, that could well be. Um, but clearly, making a connection through touch that way or some way is... is so that, that's a ve and, and these will pull back, because they think they're unlikable. They'll pull back from that touch, and eventually they might let you get away with it, but you'd have to earn it. Yeah. And, it's, and it's very socially accepted and normal, but it's touch. Yeah, yeah. But 